My boyfriend, 23 and male, and I, 23 and female, recently decided that we wanted to take the new tent that we bought on its first trip. The tent was one that hooks up to your car to provide more storage space, and we were excited to try it out. We had planned a, a kayaking trip the next day at a kayak rental shop. It was supposed to be a nice, inexpensive, outdoorsy weekend getaway. But we tend to book things last minute, so all the state parks and professional campgrounds were full. This led us to a website that is essentially an Airbnb for campsites. The place that we chose was a 100 acre property just 20 minutes south of the kayak shop. Of all the sites in the area, it was described as having working bathrooms, showers, it allowed for campfires, and all the sites were car accessible, important for a car dependent tent. This site was also the most reviewed in the area with three 5 out of 5 star reviews. But the area was very rural, so we didn't think much about the lower number of reviews for any of the campsites. The renter was Mary, who only ever texted us updates, but seemed sweet enough. Anyway, we start out our two-hour drive a bit later than anticipated, which put us behind the 11am time that we originally informed the host, but we tried to keep her updated with the new schedule. She just told us that to let her know when we arrive at the address that she sent us. We arrive to the address, and we're greeted with the barn from the pictures. It had string lights lit up all over it, seemed fairly new, and just gave a nice feel to it. We sit in the car for a minute and struggle with cell service to text the host to let her know that we had arrived. Ten minutes after our text sends, a really sweaty man who appeared to be in his 60s pulls up in an ATV. He lets us know that he's the father-in-law to Mary and she's busy taking care of the seasonal harvest and sent him instead or something. He lets us know that we can take the car anywhere on the property and offers to show us around on the ATV. My boyfriend, visibly uncomfortable, declines the offer though and asks a few more questions about the woods and how far into them we're allowed to take the car. Anywhere, he said. We can go anywhere. And the ATV man even offers to help pull my car out if it gets stuck. We ask one final question about cell service and he jokes that if we're from around here then we'll understand that reception works better on one side of the barn than the other. I am from around here and thought that it was funny but once he said that I realized he didn't have any ounce of an accent for here like he should which was odd to me. Eventually he leaves though and we begin exploring the property on foot. The barn has all the lights on in the middle of the day and it looks nice and maintained. It's insulated and has a working kitchen as well. The only warning that we got was to not drink the water. It seemed like a place that would host maybe a small 50 guest wedding or something. We walked past a shed out behind the barn to get to the trails that ran through the woods. After going through a hike that my car would have never survived, we decided that it might be best to just camp by a small creek and we chose a spot on the side opposite of the barn. We were still within walking distance, but we used my car as a sort of buffer to feel a bit more isolated. We choose our spot, and then we go into the main town to eat and we walk around. We message Mary about the fire policy, and she tells us that they'll deliver a fire ring to the barn for us to take to camp. We arrive back at the barn about an hour and a half from night time. We drive by the barn, and the lights have been turned off. But we assumed that it was on a timer as to not waste energy or money. We also noticed the fire ring had not yet been delivered. We start the grueling 30 minute setup in the sticky heat and reward ourselves with a sit in the air conditioned car. But we notice that it looks like it's about to rain so my boyfriend and I pull out our card game and wait for it to pass in the car. It only lasted about 10 minutes but it is starting to be sunset at this point. The tent held up nicely, so we felt okay leaving it for a second. And needing to use the bathroom, we start walking to the barn. As we cross the creek, we then hear what sounds to be like someone in the shed behind the barn. They sound like they're moving things around. A, a bit unsettling, but I tell my boyfriend that maybe they used equipment today and it's just sitting in there making the cracking cool off noise the equipment sometimes does. We get to the barn in any case and the lights are still off, but the fire ring is there. Well, we go in and check to make sure the power is off and it's not just the lights outside. None of the light switches will work. 
so we assume that the power is cut. Again, though, maybe it's just on a timer or something. No worries. We step out of the barn and get 10 feet away, and we then hear a hum in the distance to the opposite side of the shed, and the power to the barn is suddenly restored. Maybe it's the weather. We change direction to use the bathroom. And as soon as we step inside, the power cuts and the hum stops. I don't know why, but at this I start to get a weird feeling and I can tell that he has it too. I look to my boyfriend and say, maybe they're just watching us. I immediately follow it up with, no, that's a lot worse. We walk back outside and the lights turn on. My boyfriend says that we probably should leave at this point and... I have the same gut-wrenching primal fear. We put the ring back by the barn since we had moved to 10 feet and the barn lights start flickering. We briskly walk back to the car. The 30 minute setup was torn down in like 5 minutes and we jump in the car and we lock it. I managed to get my car going pretty quickly, thanking God that the rain did not get my car stuck. We start toward the driveway and just as we made it to the road, my boyfriend looks back and sees a man standing by the shed just watching us. As soon as my car pulls off onto the road, we get a text from Mary letting us know that the firing is out by the barn. She also informs us that we're welcome to stay in the barn if the rain had messed up our camping experience. We arrive at a nice hotel, willing to splurge for the safety. At this point, it's 10pm at the earliest. A sweet old lady checks us in, desperate for validation and just comfort from anyone. We tell her what had just happened to us at the campsite. She looks shocked. She asks us if we had seen the news lately, which we both respond that we hadn't. The lady tells us that couples in the state have been going missing, apparently. All of them had gone camping. Three couples were truly missing, and one was recently found on the side of a freeway, pretty much slashed to near death. They are, at the time of sharing this, still recovering in the hospital. We couldn't find any articles about where in the state, but the look on the lady's face suggested that it was probably somewhere near us. We get to our room and text Mary to tell her that we're not staying anymore. All they send is, thank you for staying with us. We lock the door to our hotel room and I just break down in tears. I will never forget that feeling that I got at the barn, the primal flight or fight feeling and the feeling of just being watched like that. I feel it in my throat just sharing this too. I never, ever want to experience anything like that again. So, for some background on my family and whatnot... I'm a 27-year-old female and married to my husband who is 31 and we have two children. Their names are Isaac, he's 8 and male and he's from my first marriage and Tiana with my now husband who's 5 and female. So this whole situation started somewhere around May of 2022 when me and Isaac were at the local park just doing our own thing. My son was just playing with some other child at the monkey bars when... I saw this woman approach me. She had red hair, I'm pretty sure it was natural, and her face seemed tear-stained. I became concerned as I thought that she was crying. I proceeded to ask her what was wrong, if she was alright, but she just kept staring at my son. The more she looked at him too, the more she sobbed. Then, all of a sudden, she sprints to him running and screaming, Michael. She kept calling him that and it obviously freaked me out. I mean, she was running to my kid and calling him a different name. My son and the other child, they got scared and I approached them before she did as I was faster than her. I then screamed at her to get lost, but she just stood there as I held my son and she seemed pretty enraged. She then muttered some things, but I couldn't hear her as she stomped away. The other child's father and I talked for a bit and he seemed alarmed by what happened too. He predicted that she was probably a, a grieving mother and that my son looked like the child that she lost. I was still disturbed and so I took my son home. 
Since then, I've been a bit afraid to take any of my children to any public areas despite my husband's reassurance. But skip to June 2nd of 2022, I get a call from my school stating that a woman, who was a new volunteer for lunch duty, kept mentioning that my son was her Mikey bear and that she's been looking for him for years. They told me that another volunteer who had been working with her reported this. Obviously, this scared me, and I acted immediately by signing my kids out for the day. When I called the school the next day, I was informed that she was no longer there, so I was pretty freaked out. But skip to July 13th of 2022. It was Tiana's fifth birthday, and we decided to host it at a park in my in-law's hometown. Everything went well, although I was pretty paranoid. It was somewhere around 9pm when we began sort of tidying up and as I looked at many oak trees behind us, I could have sworn that I saw her again. I screamed at the top of my lungs and started chasing after her but she somehow got away. Ever since then I haven't seen her but I feel that this is just not the end of it. At this point, I'm seriously considering homeschooling my children because of everything that's happened, but I don't know, what do you guys think that I should do? I moved into this place a couple of months ago with my parents. We also have a dog. And a couple of weeks after we moved in, I tried to open the attic door. There's no ladder. But just with a broom as it was almost opened anyway and it sort of halfway dropped but seemed like it was being, I don't know, held up by something. I didn't bother and thought that it just could have been stuck there but two weeks later I go back to look at the attic and the door is in the spot that it was originally in. Weird I thought. A month or so later, my dog usually doesn't have problems with me and my family leave the house but now she does. She will hide under tables and start to panic, etc. And at night, I, I usually hear footsteps and loud bangs sometimes. My parents are deep sleepers and they don't wake up during the night, so I know it's not them. But when I wake up and go to check out the loud bangs, nothing has fallen. I don't know if I'm going crazy or if I'm just nervous about this new house, but I went all around my house checking any closets and crawl spaces. Didn't find anything. After that, I went to try and open the attic door, but it seems like it had been boarded up, like shut from the inside or something. And it could have been the old owners, but I think that there might be someone up in the attic at this point. Anyway, I call the police eventually, and they send officers up there to check it out. And I couldn't believe it. The police, they found a sleeping bag and a ton of boxes full of stuff. No people, mind you, but still. I'm thinking it could have been one of the old owner's stuff, or at some point there was maybe someone up in the attic. I'm really shocked but comforted that there was nobody currently in my attic. My parents and I are going to board it up, just to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again, but man, it's just crazy. The ghetto where I'm from is divided by a golf course. One side of the street is project housing and the other side is nicer homes built in the 30s to 90s before the projects were there. I lived in a 1934 two bedroom house, bright yellow tile. I was 26 and I lived with my girlfriend who was 24 at the time. After living there a few months, my girlfriend started saying that she felt uneasy in the hallway which was very small and had a crawl space in the ceiling. I brought my dad over to get up there and take a bit of a look because, you know, it could be something scary up there. But he found nothing, just insulation. Anyway, a while later I took a nap for about two hours. My girlfriend in the next room was folding laundry after work. She comes to wake me up, shaking my shoulder. She asks how long I had been asleep for. I said a couple of hours. And she said, so you didn't just walk through the house? I said, no. She said, but I just saw you walk through the hallway. I, are you sure? Yeah. Well, it wasn't me. 
Plus, there's nobody else in the house. Fast forward a year, I'm trying to quit smoking and I lost my vape at some point. My buddy had been staying at my house for a couple of weeks. He's helping me look for my vape. I walk out to the car and get into the driver's seat. I'm sort of digging between the seat and the gear shift. When suddenly, something or someone is talking right in my ear. Not whispering, right in my left ear. It said, there's that SOB right there. I'm frozen. It's the dead of night. No one around. But my buddy is still inside. I finally, after about a, a minute of complete silence, open the car door and I go back inside. I, I tell him what just happened. And that's when he said, probably the same person that calls my name at night. Apparently... He's been hearing someone say his name from behind him on the couch that he slept on at night. I'm creeped out by that, but not enough to move. I mean, the rent was great, and I was not easily shaken either. Fast forward a few months, though. My mum comes over to pick me up to go shopping. I throw on a shirt in front of the hallway and say, Hey, how's this for today? My mum turned around, and her eyes go over my head. She starts to back up and tries to adjust her eyes, I said, what? She said, a black shadow just went up the wall behind you and into that room. And I remember thinking at the time, oh, so there's now that too. Fast forward to a few months later, I'm watching TV in the living room with my buddy. When we hear a loud bang and we go into our kitchen and all the cabinets are open. There was also a single jar of Nutella on the floor and a huge punch hole in the wall beside the refrigerator. That one was definitely interesting, for a lack of a better term, but I'm still not leaving. Fast forward a few more months, my buddy moved out, my girlfriend and I have broken up and she moved. I was living there alone for the first time. I go to lay down one night and my bed was freshly made so the covers were tight. I cut the light off and I laid my head back, when suddenly there was pressure on each side of my feet, like something has one hand beside each side of my feet and was pressing down as if to look over top of me or something. It lasted all of 30 seconds before I sat up and I cut the light on again. But when I did, there was nothing there. Still though, I refused to move at this point. Fast forward again somewhat, I get a new girlfriend, she starts sleeping over, says that she sees faces in the mirror in the hallway I'm like, yeah, weird things happen here. Nothing has ever tried to harm me, so I stay. This goes on for a couple of months until one day I come home to my girlfriend on the porch. It's dark and she says that she refuses to go back into the house while I'm gone. She convinces me to move at this point. I'm in love as well. I wanted her to be comfortable. We're in our new house and... I'm on my laptop one day going through old photos and videos taking at the old haunted house. And I find videos of myself being recorded from my laptop, but I'm not pressing record. And I don't remember anyone taking these. It was videos of me watching TV, working out, leaving my bedroom and walking through the house. It stops on its own. All the videos were about a minute or so long, but it was really weird. After this too, I went to the courthouse and found records where the owner and also the town sheriff had apparently died there of old age. And the community seems to believe too that there was a brothel there at some point due to a red light on the porch or something. I'm sure that that was just a rumor, but one of the neighbors said that someone had actually shot themselves in that house, but apparently there was no record of it. I could just go on and on too about other instances in that old house, but... I've gone on long enough. It was 2009 to 2013. The rent was good and, to be honest, I kind of wish that I had never left. Anyway, all the events in that house are definitely something that I'm going to carry with me. This is something that has been on my mind for quite some time. And after finding this place, I thought it would be great to share my experience. Now, I would consider myself a skeptic, but one particular period of my life has 
just always had me guessing. I just have no explanation for what I experienced there and it's always stuck with me. So, I was around 11 years old when my family moved into a house that was built around the year 1910. It was a fairly large house consisting of an unfinished basement, main floor and the attic. The attic had been converted some years earlier into two bedrooms and a bathroom. It was decided that my brother, seven years younger, and I would share the two bedrooms in the attic. Starting from the first night in the home, I was uneasy and generally uncomfortable, especially when I was alone upstairs. Part of me wants to attribute this to my new surroundings, but who knows. The upstairs area in particular gave me the creeps. The long staircase up into the hallway was always dimly lit, and led straight into a hallway, obscuring any line of sight that you would have from the bottom of the stairs. And just thinking about it, man, it gives me chills to this day. The first few months were, well, pretty much uneventful. It was probably around maybe six months into living in the home when I would get woken up in the middle of the night from what sounded like thumping coming from the stairwell. For some context, my bedroom wall shared a wall with the stairwell, and it sounded like someone sort of lightly hitting the stairwell wall with their palm. Not a smack, not a knock, but a very distinct thump. It did frighten me, but it would not last more than maybe a few thumps and then I would just fall back to sleep. This would happen about every other night for a week or so and then I would not hear the thumping again for maybe a month. I always dreaded it though. In the periods of time that I didn't hear the noises, I was relieved and optimistic in thinking that it had gone away for good. But without fail, it would always come back. It gave me a, a sinking feeling in my chest when I would wake up hearing the thumping on the other side of the wall. Then it would go away again for a few months. No one else in the house was hearing anything and my parents told me that it was just the house settling. The thudding of the house just settling. Extremely normal, right? To be fair, it could have really been that, but after I had accepted that this was probably not going to stop... I began to become increasingly uneasy in my bedroom and the upstairs in general. I slept with my light on every night. I refused to spend any time in my room unless I was going to bed. By now I was 12 or 13 years old and I began to get a, an increasingly irritated and stupidly confident uh, sort of attitude about trying to find out what was causing this noise in the stairwell in the early hours of the morning. If I was feeling particularly brave... I would get out of bed, open my bedroom door and flip on the hallway light. But nothing was ever there. Everyone in the house was sound asleep. After closing the door and getting back into bed though, the thudding would always begin again and that was very weird. By this time, it had gotten significantly louder but still occurring in the same frequency as before. In hindsight though, I... I'd have made a mistake in being so confident in catching whatever it was making this noise. Around the same time, I started to have a very strange reoccurring dream about being in my bedroom, as if I were awake, and there would be a tall man peeking at me from around the corner of my doorframe. I never saw the man's full body, only ever half of his face and his shoulder. I distinctly remember his one eye gazing into my room. I couldn't explain it in any other way except that it was incredibly unsettling. He would just stand there, nothing else. I don't believe that this was a case of sleep paralysis. I mean, I had distinct transitions from being asleep to waking and I knew it was a dream. But by now, we had been living in the house for a few years and my younger brother was now around five or six years old. His reactions to whatever was going on that was what really creeped me out. You see, up until now, I was the only one, from what I knew, having any kind of weird experiences in the house. On one occasion, though, my mum had asked me why I was scaring my little brother at night. I wasn't particularly surprised about the question, to be honest, because I would tease him sometimes. But I asked her what she meant, and she said that my brother had gone and woken our parents up and said that I kept hiding in his closet with my scary mask on. I did have some Halloween masks that he didn't like, but I certainly wasn't hiding in his closet in the middle of the night trying to frighten him. 
Heck, I was too scared to go into his room at night, let alone hide in the closet in the dark. I'm not sure what he was seeing, but what I do know is that it definitely wasn't me. When I was in middle school, I was feeling more comfortable being in the home alone, and I would sometimes be at home alone all weekend while my family went on camping trips that I just didn't want to go to. The thumping in the hallway hadn't happened in a really long time, and I'd all but forgot about it, to be honest. I had other things on my mind, I suppose. It really never came up until I would sometimes have friends spend the night with me while my parents were out of town. And eventually it came to one of them asking me if my house was haunted. I hadn't really talked with my friends about what I had experienced in the house, so I was definitely surprised by them saying that they would be sleeping on the couch and hear what they described as windows opening and closing in the middle of the night. After that conversation, no one was jumping at the opportunity to stay at my house with me on the weekends too when my family was out of town. Again though, a while passed and nothing out of the ordinary. I had again put it out of my mind. I was sitting on my computer in the downstairs area on a Friday night, waiting on my friend and his parents to come pick me up to go to an event. I was chatting away on MSN Messenger when I heard creaking coming from the upstairs hallway. These were distinct footsteps, nothing like the thumping on the walls. As I was listening, my mind was coming to the realization that I was home alone and these footsteps were not from any of my family members or friends. The footsteps began rapidly coming down the stairs and before I knew it, I jumped out of my seat and bolted out the door to wait outside for my ride. All of a sudden though, the footsteps began rapidly coming down the stairs and before I knew it, I had jumped out of my seat and bolted out of the door to wait outside for my ride. I stood by the street in the middle of the winter, waiting on them to come and pick me up and I had this incredibly unsettling feeling that I was being watched from the upstairs window of my brother's room. To this day, I still don't know what it was that caused that noise and honestly, I would rather never find out. But whatever it was, it sounded exactly like someone running down those stairs. That same night, I stayed at my friend's house and I didn't say anything about the footsteps. To be honest, I just wanted to forget about it. The next day, I came back home to my family and after a few sleepless nights, waiting on the thudding to begin again, it didn't. In fact, everything just stopped. That was the last experience that I ever had. A few years later, my family moved out of the house. A few years after that, the house apparently burned to the ground. It was a, an electrical issue that caused the fire. Every once in a while, I'll share things with my brother too that he will confirm that even with him being so young, he can distinctly remember being creeped out by that house. I'm 31 years old now and... I still don't know what I was experiencing in that house. I can't explain any of it away and I'm confident that it was very real. And I haven't had any similar experiences since I heard those footsteps. If you've stuck with me to this point, then thank you for sticking around. And I guess what I'm looking for is anyone who might have had similar experiences to the thumping and the peaking man.